Resin 2FDM 1.4 is out now. This is the version of the tool that we feel is nearing its completion, with a streamlined process and all the features you could want. So with this new version, I figure it's time for an updated, complete walkthrough of Resin 2FDM. What it is, how it works, and how to use it for your miniatures. I'm Jacob from Painted for Combat, and let's get into it. Firstly, for those new to Resin 2FDM, what even is this tool? Resin 2FDM is a Blender add-on that allows you to take miniature STLs with pre-supports designed for resin printing and make those files more compatible with FDM printers. This is done through a process of adding additional thickness to those resin supports, as well as separating them from our miniature, so that we can fully control their settings in our FDM slicer, to change the thickness, speed, and quality of the supports independently from the mini itself. As mentioned, this tool is designed for miniature files that come pre-supported. However, if you have a model that didn't come with pre-supports, you can check out the video that's up in the card and down in the description. It covers my full process for automatically adding resin-style supports to miniatures in Blueprint Studio. But now that we know what the tool is, when and why would we use it? FDM printing has come a long way for us miniatures printers, and tree supports have solved a lot of our issues with printing these more delicate models. But sometimes, tree supports are still too bulky, too hard to remove, or just ruin the detail on your miniatures, which is where resin to fdm comes in. Because, after all, resin-style supports work by having tiny, delicate supports that lightly cling to your model, allowing you to print miniatures without the need for those huge, bulky connections or encasing them entirely in tree supports. So, while tree supports might be better for larger models or simple designs, resin to fdm aims to allow you to print those more delicate miniatures that wouldn't print well or wouldn't survive support removal with tree supports. And that is resin to fdm in a nutshell. A Blender add-on designed to simplify and hold your hand through a series of processes to make resin pre-supports more compatible with FDM printing, without you really needing to know Blender much at all. So if you were looking at all that footage and felt daunted because you don't know Blender, don't worry, this tool makes everything as simple as it can be, so that by the end of this video you should have everything you need to start printing some awesome FDM miniatures. Before we get started, it is worth mentioning that there are currently two versions of Resin to FDM. The light version, available for free on Gumroad, and the advanced version, available to all membership tiers of the Painted for Combat Patreon. The light version contains everything you will need to process your miniatures. The advanced version simply adds a few additional features that are either a little more experimental or require a slightly deeper understanding of Blender. So having that tied to the Patreon means that if you choose to pick up Resin 2 FDM Advanced, you will also be getting access to the Painted for Combat Discord, where we have tons of other users, as well as myself, floating around in case you run into issues or have any questions about those additional features. Let's begin with a full walkthrough using Resin 2 FDM Lite, and then we can take a look at the advanced features afterwards. To get started, firstly we need to install Resin 2 FDM. You will need to download Resin 2 FDM Lite via the Gumroad link below. There you will find all previous and future versions of the tool, as well as a changelog for all the updates. Today we will be downloading the most recent version, which is currently 1.4. You will also need to have Blender downloaded and installed. Resin 2 FDM currently works with Blender versions 4.2 and above, but we highly recommend using a more recent version, such as Blender 4.5, which is what I'll be using today, or you could even use the newest 5.0 release if you prefer. With Blender open, you will want to navigate up to Edit, Preferences, and then open the Get Extensions menu. Here we can see and edit our installed add-ons. Next we will simply click the arrow in the top right to open this drop-down and choose Install from Disk. Then simply navigate to your Resin 2 FDM zip file and click Install. And just like that, you should now see Resin 2 FDM appear in your list of installed add-ons. But before we close this menu, there are some other things to check out. By clicking the drop-down on Resin to FDM and choosing View Details, we will see a couple of options in our tool. Firstly, you can change your default support thickness and export options here once you've used the tool enough to know what you like. But what we really want to check out is this other Build Plate tab. Here we can enable a Build Plate Visualizer, so that you can see how our mini or minis will sit on our printer. Enabling this will allow us to change the size, color, and display of the Build Plate mesh to suit your printer or you can leave this disabled entirely if you prefer. Today I will choose to enable the build plate, leaving most of these at default, but setting its dimensions to match my Bamboo Lab A1, 256 by 256 by 256. Now we can close this menu and head back out to the main viewport. The very first thing we need to do is press N on the keyboard to bring up this tool sidebar. Then head down to the Resin 2 FDM tab. 
and it's here that we finally get to see the tool. At a first glance, it might look like most of the tool is not here. But don't worry, as you complete the steps of the resin 2 fdm process, the tool will slowly reveal the parts you need. Or if you want the entire tool visible at all times, you can enable the Open All Menus option under the Feature Toggles. This is also where we can set our export method, but more on that later. The first step of the process is to prepare our scene, by simply clicking Prepare Scene. This will remove any of Blender's default objects, lights, and cameras that would otherwise mess with the tool, as well as bring up our build plate preview if that's enabled. And now we can bring in our model using the Import STL button, navigating to wherever your pre-supported miniature is located, and clicking Import. Now you should see your miniature appear on the plate. On the rare occasion that your miniature is importing with incorrect rotation, you can fix that simply by clicking your model and moving back up to the Item tab of the tools bar. Here we can change the rotation on either the X or the Y axis, and usually miniatures that come in with incorrect rotation will be off by 90 degrees. So simply setting this to either 90 or negative 90 should make the mini sit flat. And don't worry if this means the model is now above or below the build plate, as the next step will fix that automatically. With our mini imported, we can now go ahead and click Split by Loose Parts. This will make sure our mini is sitting on the build plate, then it will pull our model and supports apart into all their little pieces. Usually this will include a single object for your miniature, and a ton of tiny elements for the supports. However, sometimes certain sculptor's miniatures will also be pulled apart during this process. So the next step is to tell Blender which of these parts is the mini itself. So simply select your mini, or all of the parts of your mini if it got split up, and then press Assign Miniature. This will keep your selection separate, and then group all the remaining objects together and label them as our supports. And finally, we can see that the rest of the tool has revealed itself, giving us access to the Thickness and Export options. The Thicken Supports menu is one of the main features of resin to fdm allowing us to thicken up these delicate resin support towers to achieve two separate effects. Firstly, by bulking up these towers that are often only a millimetre or so thick, we will get stronger results when printing them with FDM, making sure that these pillars aren't so thin that they wobble, break, or fail to print. Secondly, by increasing the thickness of these supports, we ensure that the support tips are large enough to actually connect to the model when printed with a 0.2 nozzle on an FDM printer. For most sculptors pre-supports, I find that a value somewhere between 0.1 and 0.2 is perfect. Although you might find that for your printer, or the minis you've chosen, a lesser or greater value might be better. There will be some amount of trial and error while dialing this in. As we can see, the tool does give you an estimated thickness of your thickest support tower structure, to help you compare between various models. But with something like this mini with multiple support thicknesses, your mileage here may vary. Once you've entered a value, you can then click Thicken Supports to get a preview of the thickness that will be added, and then once you're happy with it, simply click Apply Modifier to confirm it. And now for the final steps in Blender, exporting our model. By default, when you import your mini, the output folder will be set to match the import location. If you want to choose a separate folder for your export, you can click this icon and select your new path. Next you can change the file name of your mini, I'll go with Knight underscore resin to fdm and moving down to our export options, by default you will see an STL export. Here you can export the mini and support separately, or export both at once. This will save your files with your chosen file name, followed by the suffix dash miniature or dash supports. Then we can click this icon to open our output folder for quick access. Earlier we did see the ability to export as a .3mf file, to avoid the need for multiple parts of each exported miniature. This can be toggled in the Feature Toggles menu we saw earlier by enabling 3MF Export. This will replace the STL Export box with a single button that will create a 3MF file containing both our miniature and supports ready to open directly in our slicer, if you prefer. I will be showcasing the slicing process in Orca Slicer today, running version 2.3.1, but this process would be identical in Bamboo Studio and should be replicable in most slicers. Starting with a blank scene, we can bring in our model, for STL exports, you want to select both the miniature and the support files, and make sure that we drag them in together at the same time. This will open this pop-up menu, allowing us to import it as a single model with multiple parts. And we will click Yes on this, to make sure that our miniature and supports are correctly aligned. Then, once imported, we will right-click on our model and split to Objects. For 3MF import, it's a similar process. Drag in the .3MF file to your scene, except here we can click No as this export method already places our parts correctly. 
And now I can quickly demonstrate another function of resin to fdm If we pull our model and supports apart, we can see that there is now a tiny cube sitting under our miniature. This gets added automatically upon export and ensures that our model doesn't just drop to the build plate once we split it from the supports in our slicer. For our printer settings, today I'll be using the Bamboo Lab A1, and no matter the printer, I would always advise using a 0.2mm nozzle for miniatures, especially with resin style supports. For filament, I find that Bamboo Basic PLA is a great choice, specifically their turquoise or grey are my go-tos. I have found these to have good strength and grip when printing these supports, but don't cling so tight that removing them is a pain. Generally, anything with a more matte or satin finish is a good choice. For process settings, if you are a member of the Patreon, I would highly recommend trying out my print settings that are available on a number of printers and can be downloaded via the Discord. Otherwise, a great option is the Fat Dragon Games printer profiles, which I'll link below. And whatever settings you go with, you'll just want to double check that supports are disabled. Now we can move over to the Objects tab and change some settings for just our supports. I like to set my supports layer height to twice my current height, so that they're printing every second layer. And then I set the wall loops to two. Moving over to Strength, you will want to scroll all the way down and find Minimum Sparse Infill Threshold, and set this to zero. Otherwise, all of the support towers will be printed with solid infill, increasing the print time unnecessarily. For speed, on a bed slinger like the A1, I like to bump everything up to somewhere around 50mm a second. But if you're using a Core XY printer, you should be able to get away with slightly higher speeds here. And with those few tweaks to our settings on just the supports, what would have been a print time of almost 6 hours has dropped all the way down to 4. Not too shabby. At this point you might be seeing a collection of flashy yellow warning errors and getting concerned. Not to worry, this is expected. The first of these warnings is telling us that there is conflicts of G-code. Essentially saying that we have overlapping models, which of course we do. Our resin style supports will be ever so slightly overlapping with our miniature, to support it and hold it in place. So no worries there. The second, empty layers on one of our models. This is simply highlighting the gap between the print bed and the start of our miniature, as the slicer doesn't know that our support object will be holding the model in place. Easy. And finally, a message that our supports have floating regions. Sometimes you will also see a similar message claiming that the supports are non-manifold. Both of these errors are usually just due to the way resin style supports are generated, as there are technically still hundreds of tiny meshes making up our supports. Just take a quick look around your model in preview mode and check for any obvious holes or printing defects, which can, on rare occasions, occur from certain resin support generators. But as long as the preview looks good at a glance, these errors are also usually safe to ignore. And now he's off to the printer. All up, this might seem like a lengthy process and a lot to remember. But to quickly show you just how fast it can be once you're used to it, I'll quickly run through the whole process. And while you watch me process this model in real time, I wanted to say thanks to everyone over on the Discord who has been helping with testing, reporting bugs, and suggesting features as these updates have been rolling out. As well as a huge thank you to CloneFace, who has been developing all of these changes for Resin 2FDM, making the tool so much more than it would have been if it were just me working on it. I'll leave a link to their website down below, where they also have a Resin 2 FDM FAQ and full written walkthrough for Resin 2 FDM, if you want that quick reference documentation of the process on hand while you're learning the tool. And there we have it, our time from opening Blender to hitting print. Not bad at all. And there it is, a miniature processed using resin to FDM light and printed on an FDM printer. And with all these supports removed, he looks pretty damn good. So now that you know the basics, let's take a look at the differences in resin to FDM advanced. But before we do, if you do find yourself interested in resin to FDM advanced, consider checking out the Painted for Combat Patreon, where for just two bucks you'll get access to resin to FDM advanced all of my printer profile downloads, and the Painted for Combat community Discord. And if you're already 3D printing for your tabletop hobby, at the higher tiers we do monthly STL releases of sculpted miniature bases, 
like this month's release The Tundra Meadows, a gorgeous set of sculpted wilderness bases, all designed to print completely support free on FDM printers, so that they will look great as the foundation for any of your miniatures. So whether you want to grab my tools, pick up this month's STL bases release, or just get involved with the community, check out the Painted for Combat Patreon, links below. Right, on to Risen to FDM Advanced, and here I will just be covering the changes between the advanced and light versions, rather than covering the whole process again. The first of these differences is some additional options in the Feature Toggles menu, all of which can be set up in the tools defaults we showed earlier. These additional features include a tip detection feature, allowing you to thicken support towers and support tips separately, as well as an auto select miniature feature that, while a little experimental, will try and select all the parts of your miniature on the occasion that your model does get pulled apart into many pieces. And finally, we've added a mesh repair feature, which aims to fix any potentially broken geometry before slicing. After splitting the model as usual, we can see the first of these features in action, the tip detection, which can be set to either conical or spherical, with an adjustable sensitivity that will try and select all of the support tips, though you may need to manually deselect a few stray support meshes. With your selection finalized, we can hit assign tips. Moving on, we can use the attempt auto select feature to select our miniature, adjusting parameters as needed. And once we're happy and we have our mini selected, we can assign the mini as usual. Now we can see that we get thickness sliders for the supports and the tips separately, allowing us to really thicken up the support towers a ton and just bump the tips until they're printable, making sure to preview both of these thicknesses and applying each once we're happy. The final addition is a mesh repair function. This feature is in its early days, hence only being available in the advanced version for now, but clicking this will run a relatively quick series of processes to try and fix any possible mesh related issues with your miniature and supports. This can be especially useful if you're finding your supports are not slicing correctly, such as leaving holes or gaps in the support meshes, something that I have had happen on occasion when using Blueprint Studio to generate supports. And from here, the exporting and slicing is identical to Resin to FDM Lite. There is one more thing worth noting, for people wanting to experiment with things such as multi-material printing, holding control when you click the export button will export the support tips and supports as separate objects, and likewise holding alt while exporting will export everything as a single combined STL, in case either of those options have any use to you. Once again, courtesy of Clone Phase, there are links below to a full walkthrough document that covers this whole process for you to reference while you're getting used to the workflow, if you prefer that over rewatching this video. There are also some links to my other videos that cover generating resin supports or getting to know the origins of resin to FDM, so if any of that sounds of interest to you, check those out down below. If you do have any questions, concerns, suggestions, or bug reports, feel free to drop them all in the comments or over on the Discord, and I'll try my best to keep on top of those when I can. Like if you liked, and subscribe to stay up to date with all of my FDM printing and tabletop projects, but most importantly, thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a good one.